In this video, you will learn how to solve an equation with variables on both sides of the equal sign. First of all, I would like to introduce you to Allie, the Algebra Assistant. She's going to help us along as we solve some of these equations. She'll give us some ideas and hints about what we should do. When I look at this equation, I can see that there are variables on both sides. On the left side, I have 3v, and on the right side, I have 8v. Allie gives us a little clue about what we should do here. She says, get rid of the smaller variable, and then it's going to be like a two-step equation. So the smaller variable is 3v. There's less v's here. So when she says get rid of it, what I'm really doing is trying to get it from the left side and make it join the 8v on the right side. So if I have a 3v, to get rid of a 3v, I do the opposite. So I'd be subtracting 3v. I'm going to draw my line down to show that, that's my equal, that everything has to stay equal. And then I'm going to subtract 3v from the right side. So these would cancel out. I'd have 8 left on the left side. 8v minus 3v is 5v, and then minus 17. See how I now have a two-step equation like we've been solving? So I'm trying to get v by itself. So I'm going to add 17 to both sides. Because this was subtracting 17, I'm going to add 17 to get rid of it. And on the left side, 18 plus 17 is 25. And then since those cancel out, I'm left with 5v. And my last step to get v all by itself, which is what my goal is, um, since v is being multiplied by 5, I'm going to divide by 5. So then I'll be getting v is equal to 5. And if it makes you feel better, go ahead and write it v equals 5. Here's another one to go through. Just a reminder, Allie tells us, remember if it's just a P, I'm going to, um, I can put a one in front of it because P is like a one P, that's the coefficient. So just like the last one, I wanna get rid of the smaller variable. So one P is the smaller one. So if I have a positive one P, I'm going to subtract one P from both sides because then I'll bring the P's under the same side. And so on the left side, I have a negative 8. Don't forget that that's a negative 8. I need to look at that sign in front of it. And then on the right side, 7p minus 1p is 6p minus 12. Then let's go on to, um, I have my two-step equation that I need to solve. So let's add 12 to both sides. So then I can start to get my P all by itself. Negative 8 plus 12. So I have more positives, and I'd have 4 more positives than negatives. And then on the left side, I would have 6P. And then my final step is going to be to get P by itself, which I'm going to divide by 6. And so P is equal to 4, 6. Now, Allie has another little reminder. Don't freak out about the fraction. Just simplify. A lot of times kids see the fraction and they think they did something wrong. But if I went through all the steps right, once in a while you will get a fraction and that's fine. All you need to do is make sure that you simplify it. And I could divide both of these numbers by 2. And that's going to give me 2 thirds. When I simplify 4, 6, I get 2 thirds, which would be what p is equal to. So if I look at my two numbers with variables, I have a 4x and a negative 5x. If I get rid of this one with the smaller amount of x's, that would be the 5x. Since this time I have a negative 5x, I have to add 5x to make it cancel out. So I'm going to add 5x to both sides. So on the left side, I'd have 5 plus 9x. 
And then on the right side, these cancel out, so I'd have 68. Now I have a two-step equation that I would be solving. So I'm trying to get x by itself, so let's get rid of this 5. Those cancel out. I'm left with 9x. 68 minus 5 is 63. And then 9x, 9 is being multiplied by x, so do the opposite. Opposite of multiplying is dividing by 9. So 9 divided by 9 is going to give me 1x. 63 divided by 9 is going to be 7. So my answer is x is equal to 7. I want you to go ahead and try this one on your own first. Stop the video, go through, find out what f is equal to, and then turn it back on and see if you did the steps correctly. So my first step is going to be get, to get the f's on the same side. So my smaller variable is going to be the 6f. So if I have a negative 6f, I'm going to add 6f to both sides. So on the left side, a negative 4f plus 6f, I'm going to have more positives than negatives. I'd have two more positives. That plus 8 drops down. These cancel out, and I'm left with a negative 10. Remember to include that sign in front of it. Don't just put a 10. Next step is to get uh, f by itself, or the 2f by itself. So subtract 8 from both sides. 2f is equal to negative 10 minus 8 is negative 18. And then my final step is to divide by 2. So that shows me that f is equal to negative 9. So when I first look at this equation, it looks kind of hard. But like Allie tells me, it looks hard, but if you just take it step by step, it's really not too bad. First we need to distribute, and then we're going to solve, just like we did in the other problems in the video. So we've done a lot with distribution, so this part you should hopefully feel comfortable with. 3 times 2d gives me 6d. 3 times 8 gives me 24. On the right side, 2 times 2d is 4d. And then 2 times a negative 4 is negative 8. So see how now it looks pretty much the same as what we were just doing in the other problems. I have variables on both sides. So let's get the variables on the same side. I'm going to subtract 4d from both sides. That leaves me with 2d plus 24 on the left side and then a negative 8 on the right side. Then let's get d by itself. So first thing, let's get the 24 out of there. So if I have a positive 24, I subtract 24 to get rid of it. So I'm left with 2d is equal to negative 8 minus 24. So I'm going more into the hole. So I'd be down to negative 32. And then my last step is going to be 2 divided by 2. Because then I'm left with d. And let's see, negative 32 divided by 2, so I'm taking half of it. I know it's negative, and it's going to be a negative 16. So see how it looked pretty hard to begin with? But if I just took it step by step and broke it down, it really wasn't so bad. Hopefully you understand now how to solve an equation with variables on both sides. If you have any questions, make sure to ask.